services they can afford to offer thanks to their rich back catalogues, stretching over 80 years of recorded music. One classic one from our catalog. These are seven records. London Calling, classic, that's, that's one of ours on Columbia. It's quite pleasing to know that those labels that I used to watch turn around when I was a teenager in the 80s is now something that I, you know, pays my salary. That's quite exciting. Sony Music has one of the most lucrative back catalogues, generating over a billion dollars in revenue every year. I think the back catalogue is absolutely vital to our business because back catalogue creates the flow of cash that allows us to invest in new talents. That kind of equity in the brand is something that allows us to then fund our acquisition of new talent. So a catalogue is absolutely vital, always has been, and I suspect always will be. It's a virtuous circle. The funds generated by back catalogues help to build success for new artists, whose back catalogues the label will then go on to own. Wow, so what can I say? Um, funny part about this clip, I was looking for this clip probably about four days ago. Uh, shout out to Dorian at group82.com, group82 music. Uh, I come across the clip on his page. I said, let me look up this gentleman. The clip you just watched is from a gentleman who was uh, or is an employee of Sony Music. Um, I couldn't find the clip. And that's because uh, this particular interview is not about him. Uh, it's an interview about artist being raped once again by the structure that uh, exists now and has existed uh, since the beginnings of music. Uh, so the focus wasn't on him, but um, I just wanted to make some things clear. My name is Omega and I thank you for watching. Please make sure that you like, subscribe and share. Omega Classic Records is the page and the name. Omega None Rhymes Greater. To the point. So first of all, that catalog, that means masters. When you look at this gentleman holding up an album of one of the greatest jazz musicians of all times, Miles Davis, and he's telling you, he says, I believe as a teenager, I remember the record labels just getting started with this music. Now it's the music that pays my salary. And back catalog is stated by the narrator as uh, generally how they're able to fund new artists that they sign aboard to the labels uh, and continue the parasitic business practice of sucking artists dry. Uh, and that's how they do it. They use Miles Davis's money <laughs> to fund this up and coming pop star that they found on YouTube or some obscure place on the internet. So uh, that's clarity one. That catalog means masters. Clarity two, this is exactly why you should not, never, ever sign over masters or your publishing to a record label because they live and breathe off of it. The life business, the lifeblood of their business is your masters, is owning your work. So they are in the game for the sole purpose to make money. They don't care about your stardom. They don't care about the next and their stardom. They're not, they're not, they're not approaching you because they want to share into your dreams and they see you on a stage as you see yourself. You're lying to yourself and you're lying to anybody else. If you're thinking that that's what a label is coming for you for. They're coming for you because you're sellable, because you're marketable, because you probably have a following on one of the coveted social media pages of today, TikTok, uh, Instagram, I can't even say Facebook anymore, uh, Twitter. And they're approaching you because you have crowd share. Crowd share is when you have a, a slither that is of another market of a significant size. And that slither of that market that you have makes you marketable. That means that you have this following of people that you can sell this product of yours to. And you look presentable and they can box you up and sell you, hence the CD. Hence the music on the CD. Hence your masters, your publishing. They look forward to signing aboard fresh, new, young acts so that they can be oblivious to the business practices, the underhandedness, the um, back boardroom unspoken to the media tactics that are practiced artist after artist after artist. All right. So this clip has already been done before, but I wanted to point out uh, some things for clarity just to make sure that when you're listening to this guy, that he's 
here on his knees, pillaging through records at this record store, combing through record after record with glee because he's looking in the, the back catalog, master's catalog of Sony music and telling you how he's just so ecstatic about these records and these albums. It, it's not because it's Miles Davis, but it's because he knows that Miles Davis is publishing and masters is held by the company that he works for. And this is how he gets his check, as he said himself, every week or bi-weekly, however he gets paid. He's an employee, so he gets paid bi-weekly or weekly, rather than being an artist, which once again, they have a screw factor in that. Artists mostly get paid, uh, depending on your contractual agreement, uh, semi-annually, quarterly. Streaming platforms pay quarterly, most of them. And other uh, parties that you have partnerships uh, or contracts with usually pay semi-annually. And if you're in a record deal where you've been given an advance, well, you're only getting paid once until you are recuperable. Uh, that means that you have paid back what was given to you in your advance. If you fail to recoup, well, that's your last album and you're in debt and you're getting sued and you're trapped on the label. Please make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. I just wanted to clear up that scumbag uh, in there on his knees. I'm not gonna say his name because his name is in the video before. You can rewind it, watch it, however you please. Uh, but nonetheless, he's a part of the scumbag system. Once again, uh, reaping the benefits off of somebody like Miles Davis, somebody that my grandmother and my father grew up listening to and appreciated and loved and held close to their musical catalog a man who was extremely talented and one of the best horn players on this earth. What about his kids? What do they get? What portion of, of this that this man on his knees pillaging through these records with, with such happiness, what portion does the Davis family get at? My guess, probably nothing. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Omega Classic Records is the page and the name. I'm out. Peace.